Good morning, Greensburg High School. I'm Frank Bell, and your instructor, Mr. Pratt, has asked me to talk a little bit about horses because I have a career of about 20 years whispering to horses, taking the most difficult anywhere, and in most cases succeeding. Not always, but I can usually get there by using a set of exercises that I designed some years ago. Um, I own the website horsewhisper.com, and the same principle that we use with horses is actually quite useful with humans. Just think about it. When, when you immediately like someone, perhaps if they've taken an interest in you and asked about your life, been good listeners. That's where it begins, both with humans and horses. Begin with giving, and what naturally follows, you just want to give back. I developed a sequence of seven exercises with all horses, every single one, whether a youngster or an older seasoned horse. I will enumerate each step, first with the horse, and then how it relates to the human. The first step is bonding. When we bond with the horse, we find the places on the horse that make the horse feel good. Indulge the horse with our gift to them, our hands and fingers in particular. I call it search touching. Search under the jaw, at the base of the ears, the withers, etc. Find spots. You can find these spots with any animal, dogs, cats, most common. But the point being, if you give to the animal, indulge the animal first, they're most likely to give back, which is the next step. Most importantly, don't wear it out and quit while it's working. With humans, since it would be rude to get our hands and fingers on a human when we first meet them, become interested in that person. Ask questions about them. Look for some common ground, shared passions. The second step is what I call take and give. Now, with constant pressure on the lead rope, ask the head to drop. In other words, constant pressure down, and if the horse gives you one iota, release. Remember that the horse learns from the release, not from the pressure. Then reward with stroking and encouraging words, not slapping the horse on the neck, but instead kneading those withers, just like you would a loaf of bread. Because you see, this is the settling place for all horses and is accessible to us, both on the ground and in the saddle. When you watch two horses in a pasture loving each other up, they're mutually nibbling on each other's withers in kind of a circular motion. Well, it just so happens that that's right in your front yard when you're riding. So if you need your horse to give your horse some assurance and help the horse settle down, you just deeply need those withers while hanging on to the reins and the horse will settle. The next step or the next part of the second step is to guide the horse's head around to the side into the girth area. Again, you're using pressure and release, so the moment the horse gives to you any little bit, you give back. But with time, you'll be able to guide the horse right in to the side where the girth is and the, and the body meets the, tar the torso. Now with humans, second step take and give with humans is trying to get that give and take going as you find common interests, common passions. Ideally, the other the other party, once you've got things going, will participate and all of a sudden a relationship is developing. The third step, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the third step with horses is called intimacy. And this is when a horse really, really trusts a human. It'll allow that head to be guided all the way around to the girth area we just spoke about, just behind the front legs where they come into the torso. At the same time, what you would do with your other hand is move back to the dock of the tail where the, where the tail meets the body and scratch vigorously with your, with your fingers, with your, uh, with your fingernails. This feels good to the horse, but more importantly, what it 
tells you that the horse is really relaxed if they'll allow you to do that and if the tail starts to come up because a tight tail is a nervous horse and a loose tail, a soft tail, is a trusting horse. When the horse really trusts you, they'll lift the tail up and you'll be able to kind of feather underneath the tail with your fingers and they love that. Now, with the human, the intimacy would be more about moving in a, in a direction of sharing some feelings, some passion, some vulnerability. In other words, going deep with this person that you've, you've just met and are developing some kind of relationship. If you share something of substance, real substance, that can actually bring some emotions, suddenly your relationship has moved to this next stage of trust building. The fourth step is what we call the dance becomes, begins because this is where the movement begins. And this is basically uh, driving a horse in a circle, lunging, if you will, sending the horse out in a circle. And then with a little bit of time, once the horse is going around a few times, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna wind the horse down kind of like a snail and you're gonna take in line and move back to that, into that girth area and stroke that girth area very lightly. But ultimately what will happen is the horse will stop and give its head to you. This can get very, very graceful, hence we call it a dance. Now with a human, it's time to begin putting your, your direction together. Where are you going? What are you trying to accomplish with this with this person that you're dealing with or this group? What are your goals? Are you selling something? Are you asking for something? Are you, you're developing a relationship and you wanna have a vision and be going there together. So you start formulating that, that plan with your partner. The fifth step is what we call confidence building. Now some horses are easily bothered for any number of reasons and it's best to find trouble on the ground before it finds you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna rattle the horse's cage a little bit deliberately. For instance, by tossing the lead rope over the horse's back as you wind the horse down like a snail, toss that rope over the horse's back. Walk up and shake a gate. Wave a plastic bag around or a burlap bag. Get creative. There's all kinds of things we can do. But the point is that when the horse tells you they're really bothered, you'll get in there and help the horse through it. Stroke the withers, stroke the neck, and maybe back off a little bit on whatever you're doing. In other words, always quit just this side of trouble. But challenge yourself to challenge the horse on the ground and learn to bring the horse back to that safe place that we created earlier with the head around to the side. You see later, when you're in the saddle, which is gonna happen very soon, if you get in trouble, all you do is pull the head to the side, back to the safe place. A lot like nurturing a child. Now with your new partner, with a the human, there will be obstacles, all kinds of challenges and deal stoppers that, that won't allow you to move forward. So the more you do your homework, the better prepared you are for those things that can stop your progress. The more well thought out you are, the more likely you are to achieve your goals. So take time to think from the other person's perspective about the hard questions and be ready to answer those. The sixth step is what we call ballet on the ground. Now again, we're driving a horse in the circle and you got the horse going nicely, you know, either direction. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach across with the hand that drives the horse. If you're going to the left, it would be your right hand. You're gonna reach across, up the lead rope, and you're gonna lift up and stop the horse's forward movement and ask the horse to face up, thereby doing a pivot or a turn on the forehand. Okay, once the horse has achieved this, then you'll ask the horse to go back a little bit so the horse is working off the hind end and go out in the opposite direction. What happens is the horse will be shifting his weight onto that hind end and do a turn on the haunches. Now this is constructive use of energy. You're connecting the brains and the feet. 
you're preparing the horse for the ride. You finish up back at that safe place by doing a wind down back to the snail, back to that safe place. You're ultimately performing a one ring stop on the ground that'll transfer into the saddle and get you out of trouble when needed. Now, number six for the human, by now your, your goal is, is, forming, is firming up. You've been making real progress, working together well, mentally dancing together. So now you should be pretty much ready to ask for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Whether you're trying to buy something or sell something or get a date, it doesn't matter what it is. If you practice your presentation until you're really smooth, then you'll probably pull it off. But it's all about being confident. And the more prepared you are, the better off you'll be. What's the saying? Proper planning prevents poor performance. Number seven is ballet in the saddle. Now ride the horse, get up, mount the horse up, mount the horse and maintain pressure on the, on the, on the inside rein because that keeps any horse from, from leaving. But get, get in the saddle, get adjusted, and then walk out with, with some life in each direction and do a, a one rein stop in each direction several times. Get real good at this. If you have a troubled horse, you may do thousands of these. But with every single horse, I do this every single time. In any case, you go out, reach down, pull the head to the side, just as you've been doing it, to your point of hip, and you will simultaneously bump the hindquarters over with the leg on the same side. If we're going to the right, I reach down with my right hand down the rein, and simultaneously my right leg is gonna move back and bump those hindquarters over because that turns off the engine. The power is the hind end. Stand up, cross your legs and run forward. It's impossible. Well. It's the same thing with the horse. Once we control the hind end, when we can shut it down, we can turn off the power. Now, simultaneously, when you get the head to come around, you've got the horse in thinking mode. You see, when a horse flips out, gets scared, what do they do? They get rigid and they run off ju just as we would if we're afraid. But as soon as you get a bend in the body, you bring the horse back to thinking mode. Now, you can get really good at this, and this can get really, really turn into a beautiful, absolutely beautiful maneuver. Once you've done the one rein stop, then you're going to, to, as you did before, you're going to ask the horse to rock back, to get its weight back, and then you're going to ask the horse to go out in the same direction that you did the one rein stop. This is the beginning stages of a rollback and it can get really snappy to where the horse actually reaches out and hops a little bit. But again, what you're doing is you're connecting brains and feet and using that energy constructively to promote your safety the whole time. You see, once you've got that one ring stop down rock solid and can disengage those hindquarters, you're infinitely safer. Now with the human, with this Thorough preparation, your goal is ready to be implemented. So do the deal, ask for the order, ask that gal for the date, ask that man for the date. The formula that you've been seeking, you're asking for now because you put it all together. You've accomplished your intention, your vision, success. Be grateful and express it. In a nutshell, the most expedient and humane approach to dealing with all living creatures is to begin with giving. Thanks for listening.